The RV Show USA is brought to you by Flagstaff, building better RVs, making smarter RVers. Here we have Candace Rivero. Thank you for holding on. I, I'm i sorry we're running late tonight. That's okay. Not a problem, Alan. All right. So, so Shamaya, does she have her audio? Can you hear a little lag? I, I think we're okay. So, so Candace, you have quite an interesting job, uh, but it's a real job. Tell our listeners what you do. Well, I'm an independent contractor. I work with the RV school, the RV driving school. There's um, about 100 and some odd of us instructors located at various places around the United States. Most of us are full-time RVers ourselves, and we teach RV driving lessons. A hundred and some odd driving. I had no idea there were that many people that did what you that do what you do. Is there that much interest in in uh, learning how to become a better driver? There really is, Alan. There really is, and of course, more and more people are buying RVs nowadays, and many of them have never driven anything as big as their motorhome. Or today, I taught somebody in a forty-foot fifth wheel. Uh, it was his first pickup truck and his first fifth wheel, and he and his son came out and took a couple of days of driving lessons. We practiced backing, maneuvering into a 50, in, into a 50 amp or a 30 amp, whatever space, and we teach them how to back into the spot and use a spotter, the second person, to help guide them into the location. If I sign up to take a class with you, Candace, walk me through what it's going to be like. I mean. You don't just, I don't just show up in my RV and say, Let, scoot over, I'm going to show you how to drive. What, walk me through, where, where is it held and, and what, do I, what do you do in the very beginning after we meet? Well, first of all, we meet at a local campground. Um, I talk to the prospective student and we agree on a date and a location. Um, I send them a couple of videos to watch ahead of time. And then I usually meet them about 9 o'clock in the morning and we do what I call some groundwork. I show them how to set their mirrors. I show them what their pivot points are. We walk off and figure out what they're off tracking and what their tail swing is going to be. We look for points on the RV where they can see in the background of the mirror where their, the rear end of the coach is. And then we take off and start driving. Um, I usually take them down the highway first and uh, make sure that they have good control of the speed of the vehicle and how to enter and exit the highway. And uh, maneuver in and out of lanes properly, and then we usually go over to some smaller, narrow roads, and then we'll go to a big, empty parking lot, and I start teaching them the uh, the backing maneuver. Uh, for one student, we usually work from about 9 o'clock until 1, and for a combo lesson, which is two students at the same time, we usually work from about 9 till 2 or 3 o'clock, and we get both of them behind the wheel. I never do any driving. I just ride shotgun with them and give them my tips and my points. And uh, by the second day, they're usually getting more comfortable behind the wheel. And we practice on some of their more weak points, um, some of their timid points. I've got instructors uh, who will point out different things if it's a, a big diesel pusher motor coach. Um, many of my students are really uncomfortable going around traffic circles, so that's what we do. Now, yeah, Candace, yeah. Hang, hang on. Just, really just, just, let me let me interrupt here and ask you a couple of questions. First off, uh, your students are they typically uh, they just got their RV, they I mean, they're brand new to it, or they've actually uh, been driving before they even got to you, and they know that they need to get a little bit a uh, little bit of instruction. We have a little bit of both. At least my experience has been a little bit of both. I've. I've met um, students who were picking up their brand new Lux 44 foot fifth wheel with their brand new pickup truck that they got yesterday and we meet at the factory and that's their first day of lessons. And then I've also been with students who the husband has done most of the driving. The wife has never been behind the wheel and the day of our lesson is her first time behind the wheel. What is the uh, most difficult part for most people uh, of the driving lesson? Is it the backing into a site? What, what's the most difficult part for them to become skilled at? It really is the backing, backing into a 90-degree space. Um, we'll go into a big empty parking lot. I have cones that I set up, and uh, but I try to use painted parking lots so that we can use the car park spaces to give them better visuals as to where they need to position the coach. And I teach the spotter how to use hand signals 
to help them get the coach into that spot. And I have a system that I teach, the same one I taught when I did tractor trailer driving. And um, it seems to work pretty well. They just most of the time leave after a day or two of, of the training. They need more practice, but they now feel comfortable to go out there and practice on their own. I, I guess you've probably been uh, with some of your students in the beginning. you got to be going, ah! I mean, there's a lot of people that need some help driving, learning how to do the right way. You've probably been in with many of them, I would imagine have, but really none of them had made me that nervous. If I have to tell you something three times, my voice gets a little bit louder. <laughs> usually they pay attention to me, and I give them the tips on how to, you know, how to center the coach, and uh, once their mirrors are set properly, I just keep giving them tips. You know, stay to your left, center yourself, move over to the left a little more, move over to the left a little more, and after a couple of days, they, they get it. Uh, we've got uh, one of your fans here, Candace, is on uh, watching the live stream. Tracy Carpenter said that uh, she's telling everybody that if, if they need a driving uh, class, they need to ask for you, Candace. I, apparently, you taught she and her husband last week. They had a great time, and she feels very comfortable with the RV now. Well, that's great. I'm glad Tracy's there. She was a hoot. We had more fun. She was basically very timid to get started, but she did. She went out there, and she did a straight line back, and we drove all the way around the parking lot in two different directions and uh, she did a really good job and this is the second rv that she and her husband have had it's much bigger than their other one mm -hmm. and they sold their house and are now full-time rving and they were a lot of fun to, to work with i really enjoyed them i, I want to get your take on couples you know i mean tracy's a perfect example though you said she was a little bit timid uh, talk to me the, about the importance of both both people in the partnership, the marriage, being able to be capable in driving and why that is so important. Well, it really is because sometimes something can happen to the primary driver. Something as simple as uh, twisting an ankle, stepping out the steps. It's happened many a time. Sometimes it's something much more serious, such as a medical issue. And when the spouse, the partner, the wife can't even move the RV to go be near the husband if he's in the, in the hospital or in extended uh, rehab situation, then it becomes an additional stress for them. And not all spouses or, or second drivers are going to be the designated driver, but at least if they know they can and they can help out their partner, it just makes it so much better for both of them. If you were to give some advice, just some observations from Candace Rivero, what are the a couple of things, that the, the uh, maybe a, a wish that you wish every RVer would either do or stop doing in terms of the driving? What are the couple of the biggest things? Number one, slow down. 75 miles an hour on a travel trailer, a bumper pull, or even a fifth wheel is not safe. It's just not safe. Um, I pull a 38 foot fifth wheel with a one ton dually, and my sweet spot is between 62 and 65. I don't care if it's 80 across Texas or Wyoming or whatever. I'm under 65 because I know if I have a blowout at that speed, it'll still scare me, but I'll be able to control it. 75 is way, way, way too fast. And of course, most tires are not even rated for that speed anyway. So the biggest thing I would tell everybody is slow down. Be very intentional in your maneuvers. Slow down around the corners. Know where your the physical body of your coach is because wherever you steer it, Wherever it ends up is exactly where you steered it. So just take your time. Slow, slow, slow. I repeated that a bunch when Tracy and Steve and I were out, and she giggled with that. Just slow, slow, slow. Once a passenger, a co-driver, has gotten behind the wheel, they have a much better comfort level sitting in the passenger seat because they, now they know what the primary driver is seeing, and they're not nearly as nervous. So I would highly encourage any couple to make sure both of you have driving experience and if you're not comfortable behind the wheel then take a lesson are there many people that when you they show up for a lesson and you look at their you pull up and you see their rig and you're going oh man these people need a, a, a bigger truck or they're overweight or the you know their tongue weight is too much or do you, do you see much of that or do you do some uh, is there a pre-class uh, I don't know questionnaire I need to fill out so you at least know what you're getting into and, and I the student would be able to provide that for you well, basically, um, the school gets the initial inquiry, and the people, the customers, the prospective students will put in the specs on their rig. And there have been a couple of times when I've said that's not a safe matchup. You can't, 
I'm not comfortable teaching somebody in an F-150 with a 38-foot travel trailer that grosses the same as the truck does. It's just not safe. Um, there have been a couple of them that I've taken that have a short bed, non-sliding hitch, and we've had quite a few discussions at what the challenges are. Um, I had one student recently who realized that the dealer had sold her the wrong hitch, and we went over to a local hitch company in Elkhart, Dan's Hitch, and he explained to her the different features, and they were able to work out a trade-off to where she was able to get a fully sliding hitch for her short bed truck so that she could stay with the big fifth wheel that she really liked. Um, we did the lesson, and she did fine, realizing what her limits were, and, you know, you just deal with it. But the uh, drivers are fully responsible for for their vehicles, and I never get behind the wheel. Their insurance covers them, and I just give them the best tips I can for maneuvering the vehicle combination that they have. If it's not safe, I won't do the lesson. Okay, so I'm on your website right now at rvschool.com, and I'm looking under rates because I know people are going to say, well, how much is this thing? It looks like you've got a, a single-person private lesson, a two-person lesson, and a, and so you got different options, a refresher course, uh about four hours or so is the private lesson. Six hours is the two-person private lesson. Correct. And that's all hosted by the RVSchool.com. I'm just mm -hmm. an independent contractor for them. Um, and they handle all of the payments, so everything is done through the school. The school then sends me an email with the prospective student's contact information, and I have a conversation with them about what their background is, what their experience is, um, where they would like to meet, and uh, usually it's at a local campground where I happen to be. I'm in uh, south of Chattanooga right now, but I do a lot of the lessons over the summertime up at Elkhart Campground. And in Arizona, uh, in November, I'll be down near Tucson, Arizona. But RP School also teaches at the FMCA rallies and mm -hmm. some of the escapees rallies. Okay, so I, I also see at, at the bottom of the rates page, uh, and I think it ought to be in bigger bigger font than this. It says that uh, a certificate will be presented after a specific lesson. This can be submitted to your insurance carrier. Many insurance companies will authorize a discount for completing the training. I think that's amazing. So over time, it actually pays to go to driving school. It really does. Many of the, um, the students have completed their lessons and submitted a certificate to the insurance carriers and got, gotten a decent discount. Some of them are already at the lowest price point mm -hmm. for their insurance carrier, but it doesn't hurt to ask. Yeah, I think that's a that's a, a great thing. How do people, we're going to wrap it up, how do people get more information, Candace? And I just I just got to tell you, I interview a lot of people. You are so good. You're so good with, you. you're concise, you're very descriptive, very professional, and I can see why people just love taking a driving lesson from you. Well, thank you. I appreciate it, Alan. We've got a lot of great instructors on the staff. Um, George Malabin, the owner of the school, was originally one of the very one of the first twelve instructors. And when the, the school was going to be sold, he was able to purchase it. And he and his nephews, Jim and John, have grown it. And it's a great team of people to work with. They're, they're really a joy. But RVSchool.com is where they can go to check out the RV lessons that might be available in the area they're in. Awesome. We've got it on the screen right now. And thank you so much. Um, I hope that uh, we will be able to help you and RVSchool.com make the roads just a little bit safer. So thank you again for being with us. Thank you so much, Alan. I appreciate you. All right. Likewise. You know, folks, I think that uh, RV Driving School is something that is definitely helping make our roads safer. And I would encourage you to look into it. I wish them much, much success. 